for joining us for the Lakefront News. I'm Mariana Salazar. Students, get ready. Midterms are right around the corner. Are you prepared for them? Maybe you need a good study area to get the best grades. Our Alex Escobar talked to our Lady of the Lake students to see what works best for them. When it comes to studying for midterms, some students have different methods for preparing. Our Lady of the Lake freshman, Angelica Rodriguez, says she works best without any distractions. I myself like it more if I'm by myself instead of group studies, just because I like to concentrate more on my thoughts. Rodriguez also says the second floor of the main building has a good spot to study and that she used the area a lot last semester. I know the lab areas in the computer labs, they're usually full and crowded, so if you really need to be there for printing, that's a good suggestion, but also the cafe, it's pretty quiet if you were to go there. Perhaps a quiet session in the library can help you prepare for midterms. Just be sure to keep your voice down. Shh. The library offers many places for students to find a nice place to study. Uh, I think a lot of students don't realize how beneficial some place like a library can be. If you want kind of extreme quiet, head up onto the third floor. There's desks and cubicles and you know tables where you can kind of spread out and just really focus on your work. And on the first floor, you can find the Academic Center of Excellence that could help you prepare for midterms. Sabrina Zerduce is the lead writing consultant and assistant to the director to ACE and urges students to take advantage. Um, you will find all of our subject tutors here in various subjects like biology, chemistry, accounting, economics, psychology, um, as well as our writing consultants who are available to help with any assignment that has to do with writing. Reporting for the Lakefront News and wishing students good luck on midterms, I'm Alex Escobar. The Center for Career Development and Testing at Our Lady of the Lake University is hosting an internship fair. On Thursday, March 8, 2018, representatives from all of San Antonio will be looking to recruit Our Lady of the Lake students. The internship fair will be located in Providence Hall, West Social Room, and Blue Room from 11.30 to 2 p.m. It will give students the opportunity to talk to multiple em employers at one convenient location. Work study is an option for students at Our Lady of the Lake who want to make money while being on campus. Our Lady of the Lake has many options for students looking for a work study. A benefit from work studies are that they are flexible with your schedule. This is a good way for students to gain work experience and have some extra money to buy food, books, or anything they may need. Dealing with stresses and strains of everyday life? Looking for a three-day weekend getaway with your friends? Sign up now for Awakening Retreat 56. Lakefront reporter Celeste Pineda has more. Awakening Retreat 56 is hosted by the Ministry Office at Our Lady of the Lake University and will be taking place at Camp Sionito in Bandera, Texas. The retreat registration is open to Olu and non-Olu students. Marissa Gutierrez is an Olu senior who has attended Awakening Retreats before. She tells us how the retreat has helped her. Mid-semester, it gets um, a little too much, quote-unquote, but going to the retreat, focusing on yourself for three days, like having the ability to have space and like regroup and coming back, it really helps. The retreat is taking place March 23rd through the 25th, so students are packing their bags for the powerful three-day weekend. Registration is $20 for OLU students and $30 for non-OLU students. Your admission price will take care of a few things needed for the weekend. It goes towards the retreat because there's a lot of supplies, there's food, uh, there's the transportation, and there's the, the camp itself that we stay at, Camp Cianito. On average, there are 30 to 50 students who attend the retreat each semester, and Sister Lori says they will accommodate students who wish to attend. Students can look forward to is an experience uh, and a safe space for them to grow, for them to question and uh, work on their own spirituality. You can register online or pick up an application at the Elliott House. Cash or online payments are accepted as well. Reporting for Lakefront News, I'm Celeste Benyeda. 
Our Lady of the Lake University is located in the heart of, West, of the west side surrounded by many fast food restaurants, making it difficult for students to access healthy food options. Fast food restaurants make it easy for students to pick up food at their convenience, but now Olu Dining Services promotes fast, healthy options to accompany student schedules. The cafeteria offers breakfast, lunch, and dinner options with daily entrees, grilled items, and a salad bar. It's the beginning of March, and it's time to recognize women's contribution to history. March is the official Women Histories Month. Our Chloe Brown has more on this story. Our Lady of the Lake University has a strong female presence in its founding. So in honor of Women's History Month, I went around to find out how students feel about the impact of women's history within the school. Many women have started out here and they've created Olu as a whole. Um, I feel like we don't give women enough credit as they deserve it, especially nowadays. Whether hanging out with the statue of Joan of Arc or the school building's names, students are surrounded by women's history. To be able to come to a school where there are women who themselves have made history and who um, walk these halls who are uh, currently making history for us is really inspiring and um, it's just all around like a motivational experience. Senior Ariel Trevino also adds that women's history is a time for reflection on the accomplishments of women of the lake as well as around the world. The students I spoke with say that they feel privileged to attend a university with such a rich woman's history. Reporting for Lakefront News, I'm Chloe Brown. Some students and faculty members at Our Lady of the Lake University are speaking out on climate change. Mariana Salazar reports on how you can be part of the change. Our Lady of the Lake professor Brianna Salas says humans are having an impact on climate change and believes environmental sustainability could help. Of natural resources that is done in such a way that it allows for the long-term use of that resource. Professor Salas tells us how we can accomplish this. One of the biggest ways that you can actually in, uh, decrease uh, fossil fuel consumption and your ecological or carbon footprint is to um, eat less meat. Um, so switching to a more plant-based diet actually um, has huge environmental and ecological impacts. Professor Sala says that decreasing transportational pollution and using renewable energy can have a major impact on the environment. Gina Vasquez, a student in the Dual Concentration Psychology program, says we must view all aspects of the environment to reach a common goal. Land spill waste, water, uh, water pollution, you know, obviously our whole ecosystem ecosystem gets affected by one thing so um, you know I feel like there's a lot of different characteristics that are kind of equally important but ultimately will achieve the same goal. Our Lady of the Lakes biology department encourages students to stop by if they have any questions on how they can help. Our Lady of the Lakes students now have access to new high-tech printers which allow them to print from anywhere on campus. The new printers were brought this spring semester and were put in all the main student study areas and computer labs. The printers have a built-in scanner that scans to various online cloud storage sites and to thumb drives. The printers are part of an ongoing change of equipment that began in November 1, 2017. A few students from the College of Arts and Sciences are taking a trip of a lifetime this spring break. Reporter Destiny Camacho has more information on the upcoming trip. Students are taking a break from their textbooks and hopping on a flight to Europe on March 10th. The Our Lady of the Lake English Department gave students the opportunity to walk the streets of London and see firsthand places from their readings. Senior Hannah Walker tells us what this opportunity means to her. This trip is, is important in multiple reasons. Number one, um, in terms of actually taking a trip, it's something, it's an experience that not a lot of people are necessarily going to get. This is a very special kind of trip. Um, a lot of the kids in the class, this is probably, I don't know, for, for me probably, this is going to be the only time I'm like out of the country. So this is an exper experience I'm not going to get again. Students are dropping their textbooks and picking up their sunscreen. It's also just a really 
neat interactive way to take what we're learning in class from our paper, from our books, and putting it into a real life perspective of actual place and people and culture and all that. So it's going to be fun. Throughout the 10 day trip, students will get to see Westminster Abbey as well as attend St. Paul's for Mass. And toward the end of the trip, students will journey to Edinburgh, Scotland for even more learning opportunities. The trip was part of Dr. Leah Larson's Crime Punishment in London course. This was not the first time Dr. Larson has helped fundraise to take students on a trip to Britain. Reporting for the Lakefront News, I'm Destiny Camacho. Our Lady of the Lake hosted one of its last events on Black History Month. Lakefront reporter Denise Cornell has more. Dozens of students, faculty, and staff gathered in the Providence West Social Room at Our Lady of the Lake University to have an open conversation regarding controversial issues surrounding race. Educate and to shed light on a lot of history that black uh, students have gone through. The event titled Black Coffee, No Sugar, No Cream was open to the Olu community. People of color, being an African American, it's strong, it's powerful, and that's what black coffee is. We don't want the excess, we don't want the sugar, we don't want the cream, we just want it pure. Black Coffee, No Sugar, No Cream was one of the last events dedicated to Black History Month hosted by the Saints Production Board on February 27th at 7 p.m. There was free food, trivia, and spoken word from different poets. It's important to have events like this because right. it brings everyone together, not just for the purpose of Black History, but for everyone to come up and have the courage to perform on stage and perform stuff they've been working on. Look out for events coming up soon from the Saints Production Board in honor of Women's History Month. I am Denise Coronel, Lakefront News. Stay with us after the break for your sports news. Hi, you think you're probably sober? Yeah. But you're thinking about taking the back roads home just in case. Why would you do that? Probably okay isn't okay. Call a cab, a car, or a friend. Good choice. Welcome back. The baseball team split a doubleheader against Midland University last weekend. In the first doubleheader of the series on Saturday, the Saints oh. lost 2-7 to seven and won 7-3. On Sunday, the Saints won the third game 5-4 to four, and dropped the final game 2-9. to nine. Olu is now 6-12, and 12, while Midland improves to 11-5. and five. They will return to their home field and begin their conference schedule on Thursday, March 1st against LSU Alexandra. The women's and men's basketball teams played their last game at the regular season last week. Both teams lost to LSU Shreveport on Friday, February 23rd, and the men lost to LSU Alexandra on Saturday, February 24th. The men will finish the season as third seed in the conference tournament that begins this Thursday in Longview. The women, after defeating LSU Alexandra on Saturday, finish as the second seed and will have a first round bye in the tournament. They will play on Friday, March 2nd at 1 p.m. Visit the Saints website for times and links to watch the games. Coming up after the break, meet our sister of the week. They told me a bottle couldn't dream. That I would never become a superhero. But I learned how to fly. Just to come back in a new disguise and be the hero that I've always wanted to be. Every week, we talk to one of the sisters of Divine Providence to hear their, their story. This week, we welcome Sister Lourdes Leal. I've been a sister of Divine Providence for 56 years. I um, entered as a senior, I, I'm a native of San Antonio, and I entered at the lake, from the lake, and uh, entered the convent as a senior. Well, in those days, we had a sister of Divine Providence teaching in uh, all the levels of the university, but also I had sisters of Incarnate Word in grade school, at a Catholic grade school in St. Anne's, and also at the Catholic grade school in Little Flower, where the Sisters of the Holy Spirit. 
And so the, the, the dedication and the faithfulness and the kindness and generosity of the sisters, and they were so dedicated to serve. In the Rio Grande Valley, I ended up helping some of the refugees because in the 80s, uh, there were a lot of uh, people coming across from, the, from, from Mexico, from Central America. And, uh, that, and I continue that kind of work today. I like to, to be able to help the, the, the immigrants that are coming, the, those that are coming out of detention centers. So that's one of the, my kind of interests right now. And I also have an interest with music. I sing with the diocesan um, choir, and I and I've also sing with the sisters here. So those are some of my two interests right now. Well, first of all, I started off teaching here at the lake at, our, at Harry Jerzyk as a speech pathologist, and I loved working with the students and teaching, and I did that for 20 years. Then I went on to um, the Rio Grande Valley, and I loved that because there were always exciting things happening, and we were fewer sisters there. And then I ended up serving four years in Mexico as a ministry with our sisters, and that was a, one of the highlights. Right now, I am serving in leadership for our congregation, and that means that we work on in administration, and we have to look at the big picture. But we also get to work with sisters that, that uh, need some guidance in their journey or are having problems, so that has been very rewarding. And right now, we're 130 sisters, and, and at least 100 live on this campus, so that kind of uses up all our time. Well, I think I have become, I've grown in prayer, I've grown in, in a contemplative life, but I also realize that I've had wonderful experiences with knowing all kinds of people during all the years of ministry, and I've enjoyed those. I think my message is that, that college is such an important time that you look for, for meaningful answers, you, you ask questions, and maybe you come up with or discern what you're gonna do with your life. Thank you for joining us for the Lakefront News. I'm Mariana Salazar.